Yesterday, Pierre Polyev held an immediate press conference just to respond to the faulty and fiscally irresponsible federal budget. The gloves came off as Polyev roasted Trudeau's reckless spending spree disguised as a federal budget. He called out the insane deficits and useless pet projects that will bankrupt our future. Trudeau, on the other hand, sauntered to the podium, flashed his manufactured smile, and proceeded to put on an absolute disaster of a show, claiming he's trying to heal an already broken nation. The budget, losing with frivolous spending and lacking fiscal sanity, perfectly encapsulates how the prime minister manages to frustrate all demographics from young to old. Neither Canada's youth nor seniors are safe from Trudeau's chronically tenured government. He crows about helping young people, yet heaps on massive future debt that they must shoulder. Young voters see through his platitudes and every hardworking Canadian is now flocking to common-sense conservatism in hopes of fixing the budget and bringing it back home. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we start today's video, take a quick second to subscribe to our US-based channel, Street Politics USA, where we report daily uncensored US news and how the unfolding political landscape can impact Canada. You can find the link in the description below. Another day in the hellish scape that beautiful Canada has unfortunately become under Justin Trudeau and the Liberal NDP corrupt coalition. This time a budget has been tabled by Trudeau and his equally corrupt Deputy Prime Minister and it gives off a glimpse into a costly and dire future for Canada and Canadians. The budget was so bad that Conservative leader Pierre Polyev held an immediate press conference just to respond to the faulty and fiscally irresponsible federal budget. Polyev expressed his disdain for Justin Trudeau's sleazy talk about how the future is bright for young Canadians when the budget is set out to achieve the exact opposite scenario. He talked about how the budget does not stop the egregious trend of overspending taxpayer money, that Trudeau and his liberal cronies love to do so much that it has absolutely become a hobby for them. The state of Canada's streets with the homeless erecting tents everywhere, the housing crisis that has broken Canadians down and will for the foreseeable future, act as a blockade for young Canadians looking to start their life, the awful healthcare plans and the waiting times that has put Canada at the bottom of the ranking when it comes to healthcare in wealthy nations, the atrocious economy that is down to its knees and continues to negatively affect quality of life and affordability for many day-to-day -day Canadians. All of these issues are simply ignored in favor of more spending on things like vanity climate projects and AI technology that will help the Liberal government to better control your life in the future. The common sense team that is going to fix the budget so that Canadians have powerful paychecks that buy affordable food and homes in safe neighborhoods. Exactly the opposite of what we've seen because after eight years, Justin Trudeau is not worth the cost of food, homes, and everything else. In fact, everything Justin Trudeau has touched in eight years has gotten worse. Let's go through his promises. In 2017, he created an affordable housing program of $89 billion. What has happened since then? Housing costs have doubled. He doubled rent, mortgage payments, and down payments. In fact, when Justin Trudeau became Prime Minister, after I left him an affordable housing market as Housing Minister, at that time, it took 38% of a family's income to make payments every month on an average home. That number is now 64%. An astonishing fact remarked upon by the liberal international magazine called The Economist. They actually tweeted it out because it was so astonishing, even though it has been largely suppressed by the state-controlled and state-funded media here in Canada. After eight years of Trudeau, we have tent encampments in every major city. Halifax has 35 homeless encampments alone. After eight years of Trudeau, we see 26 international students crammed into the, the basement of one home in Brampton. And the guy who screwed up the immigration system to cause that mess, <laughs> Sean Fraser, is now in charge of housing. After eight years of Justin Trudeau, it takes 25 years to save up for a mortgage for the average, sorry, for a house uh, down payment for the average family in Toronto and 29 years for the average family in Vancouver. You used to pay off an entire mortgage in that time. After eight years of Justin Trudeau's carbon tax, we now have 
two million people lined up at food banks, a record smashing total. Images of people around, lined up block after block that if they were made into grainy black and white images, you would think you were looking at a documentary from the Great Depression. After eight years of Trudeau, there is now a Facebook group called the Dumpster Diving Network, where people share tips, 8,000 people share tips on how they can eat out of a garbage can. In fact, it's true that you can't afford to live after eight years of Trudeau and the NDP, but you know what? You can't afford to die either. In Newfoundland, there are 28 dead bodies in freezers outside of a hospital next to a dumpster because their families cannot afford a burial or cremation. This would have been unimaginable before Trudeau and his NDP government took office. And all these deficits, all of the doubling of the national debt, remember it was supposed to stimulate growth? We've had the worst per capita GDP growth of any country in the G7, and by far. That is the disastrous record of Justin Trudeau. And yet, he wants to keep going. Over the last several weeks, he has been pouring fuel and not water on the inflationary fire that he lit with tens of billions of dollars of new spending for the same old programs that caused the misery in the first place. Even liberals are starting to speak out. Today, proud liberal and former Bank of Canada Governor, Governor David Dodge, who worked for Martin and Chrétien, has said that this budget is on track to be the worst since 1982, as Trudeau doubles and triples down on the costly failures that have left Canadians hungry and without homes. So my message is simple. We're stuck with this costly coalition for a year and a half, it looks like. There will be an election where Canadians will choose between the costly coalition of the NDP and Trudeau who tax your food, punish your work, take your money, double your housing costs and unleash crime and chaos in your community, or common sense conservatives who will ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget and stop the crime. But there's still another year and a half where Canadians have to find a way to survive. So my message to Justin Trudeau is this, in one word, stop. Stop doubling housing costs. Stop taxing our farmers and food when our single moms and seniors are going hungry. Stop the inflationary deficits that are driving up interest rates and forcing Canadians to lose their homes. Stop endangering our social programs and jobs by adding more and more debt. For the love of God, Justin Trudeau, you are not worth the cost. So today, will you please stop? Stop until common sense conservatives can start governing with common sense for this country. It is truly a sad state of affairs that Polyev has to publicly speak for every downtrodden Canadian and ask Trudeau to just stop. Only for Trudeau and the Liberals to never care or attempt to circumvent the countless issues hardworking Canadians face. It is not a secret that the Trudeau government's priorities are wildly out of step with the needs of average Canadians. While Canada faces rising inflation and economic uncertainty, Trudeau and his Liberals have delivered a budget filled with excessive spending and tax hikes that will hurt workers and businesses. This budget represents a staggering $53 billion in new spending over the next five years. And how is Trudeau paying for these massive new expenditures? By gouging Canada's businesses with higher taxes, of course. The Liberals are increasing the capital gains inclusion rate, meaning those who have invested wisely and earned profits will now be punished with a bigger tax bill. This will affect hardworking Canadians, not just the super wealthy, as Trudeau disingenuously claims. Small business owners in particular will suffer under the capital gains tax increase, with inflation already squeezing family budgets due to higher prices for groceries, gas and housing, the last thing Canadians need is a government helping itself to more of Canadians' hard-earned money. And what are Canadians getting in return for all this spending and taxes? More wasteful liberal pet projects and bloated bureaucracy.
The recent Liberal budget makes clear that Prime Minister Trudeau remains determined to waste taxpayer dollars on dubious artificial intelligence initiatives. As previously discussed and publicly revealed, this budget allocates an astounding $2.4 billion towards advancing AI across government. While experts have raised serious concerns about the effectiveness and ethics of AI, Trudeau seems intent on plunging ahead with little regard for the implications. And he is not even waiting a little bit before utilizing the technology through his corrupt liberal government, as recent reports have revealed that the government already used AI technology to help with day-to-day -day politics and assist in new useless initiatives and programs. Another wasteful area of spending is the $500 million being directed towards mental health initiatives for young people. This overlaps with existing provincial mental health services and supports. The federal government seems unable to help itself from interfering in provincial matters, leading to overlapping services and wasted spending as multiple levels of government fund the same types of programs. Trudeau is apparently doing all he can to garner a smidge of the young vote that he lost. The budget also allocates over $900 million towards green home retrofits and energy efficiency incentives. This is essentially a replica of past failed programs that have seen low uptake and meager results. There is no reason to believe that rehashing this same rebate program will yield better outcomes. The definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Canadians are right to question if all this spending will lead to meaningful results or if the country will be deeper in debt with little to show for it. Experience with previous liberal budgets indicates much of this funding will be frittered away without proper oversight, analysis, or performance metrics. And as Paul Ia has stated in his response speech to the budget, as Trudeau and Freeland budget is one of the most incompetent and corrupt government displays in a long while. Truly, there has never been a worse budget since the 1980s. While regular Canadians suffer under crushing inflation, the Liberals continue to run massive deficits and add to our ballooning national debt. The budget projects deficits of at least $40 billion annually for the next five years. Canada is now projected to be $1.4 trillion in debt by 2028. This is fiscal lunacy. This is a budget that is not focused on taxing the wealthy like Trudeau and Freeland would have you believe. It is a budget that is more focused on making life for the average hardworking Canadian and the middle class much worse. So this is exactly what Justin Trudeau promised in 2015. And now, Justin Trudeau and his wealthy friends are paying less tax. Trust fund Trudeau. The guy who hid his own fortune, his own family fortune in a trust fund so that he could protect it from taxes while raising taxes on everyone else is not going to take money from the billionaires that give him free vacations on islands in the Caribbean. We already know where the money's coming from. It's coming from single moms, seniors, and small business owners. He says he's not raising taxes on the middle class in this budget. He already did on April 1st with a carbon tax that makes every middle class family pay more than they get back in rebates. And let's just review the numbers here because I know the media has been trying to cover this up. This is across the country in uh, the carbon tax cost for the average middle class family. This year, Albertan, the middle class, this is the middle quintile, the Alberta family will pay 911 more in taxes than they get back in rebates. Saskatchewan, $525 more than they get back in rebates. Manitoba, $502 more than they get back in rebates. Ontario, $627 more than they get back in rebates. Nova Scotia, $537 more than they get back in rebates. PEI, $550 more than they get back in rebates. Newfoundland and Labrador, 377 more than they get back in Libra. These are numbers that will increase over time, and these are the numbers for middle-class fund families, the middle quintile according to the parliamentary budget officer. So it is the working-class people that Justin Crudeau is ripping off with his high inflationary taxes and spending, and everything else he does today will be political theater designed to distract from that. When it comes to young Canadians, the budget is unlikely to move the needle. Despite some targeted spending, there is little in this budget to truly excite or inspire young voters. On housing, the budget extends some first-time homebuyer programs but does little to make home ownership more affordable in the near future. Most of the proposed policies have been announced weeks before the budget, but it mostly focuses on useless incentives for renters to give them a leg up when deciding to finally purchase a home. 
Except most of the policies are as wasteful as every other failing liberal program since it focuses more on enhancing the credit score while not addressing affordability and job payments, you know, things that landlords actually look for and review. With prices spiraling out of control in many markets, most young people see little benefit in measures that will not even help purchasers years down the road. So with all this mess and how the great and definitely beneficial federal budget turned out to be a complete shame and a slap in the face of every tax-paying Canadian, how would conservative leader Pierre Polyev fix this embarrassing Trudeau budget? Well, Polyev vowed to inject some common sense into the budget. He promises to be fiscally responsible by axing the pointless and costly carbon tax, alongside reducing the income tax, so that hardworking Canadians can enjoy the fruits of their labor more. Polya promises to build the homes and bring back affordability, and his message is obviously resonating with all Canadians young and old. Because Canada is a hellish scape during Trudeau, and common sense conservatism will make sure it is not after Trudeau. A common sense plan to axe the tax, to bring down the cost of energy, food, and everything else. We will axe the carbon tax. That will make our businesses more competitive, our wages higher, our food more affordable. We'll cut income tax so hard work pays off. We'll fix the budget by bringing in a common sense dollar for dollar law that requires that we find one dollar of savings for every new dollar of spending while we slash the waste and reduce the burden on the backs of Canadians, a smaller government with bigger citizens. We will build the homes by requiring municipalities permit 15% more home building as a condition of getting federal funds and that they permit high density housing around every transit station. We'll sell off 6,000 federal buildings and thousands of acres of federal land to build, build, build. We'll take the carbon tax off so that building materials are more affordable and we'll stop the crime with jail not bail for repeat violent offenders, with treatment not more drugs for people addicted and with stronger borders and secure ports to stop the criminals from taking our stolen cars out and bringing drugs and guns in, all while we respect lawful licensed firearms owners. This is the common sense future that we can look forward to. The good news is life wasn't like this before Justin Trudeau, and it won't be like this after he's gone. We're gonna restore the country that we knew and still love, where hard work pays off, where government is the servant and not the master, where government is the servant and not the master of the people, where hard work means an affordable home and food in a safe neighborhood. This is the country to which we can look forward. This is the country that common sense will build. The common sense of the common people united for our common home. Your home, my home, our home. Let's bring it home. Thank you. Well, that's all for now. What do you think of Trudeau's 2024 budget? Do you believe there is some good within all the excessive spending? Or do you think the budget has completely failed? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.